Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. Uh, we trust that you are having a blessed week, that you are uh, doing well, that you have been pursued by and embraced by the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, we are going to have a uh, Thanksgiving service tonight. We welcome you. We're going to talk about being thankful. We're going to talk about that, the importance of it and the meaning behind it. And um, I'm messing with some stuff here while I'm doing this. So anyway, those of you who are joining us, that you come in, we, we're we glad you're here. We're glad you're uh, making uh, opportunity and uh, situating yourself to get you something to uh, snack on or to drink, uh, water, uh, decaf, whatever you prefer there. And you can uh, uh, come join us and, and lean in. And we're just going to share some, some things tonight. And uh, if you're from out of state and you're watching, I see somebody just popped in here from Texas. And so we welcome you, uh, those of you who are uh, not part of our local family here in the in Ravenswood. We're grateful that you could join us tonight as well. So um, there's some things on my heart tonight. I, I want to say uh, that I appreciate so many of you who have stood with us in prayer for uh, Brother Larry Smith. Um, we uh, Some of you got to meet him last year. Um, in 2019, I guess, before um, everything went south as far as COVID, COVID goes. Um, and, um, you know, he got to share things about the work of God in Mexico. He passed away uh, in the wee hours of uh, Monday morning. We prayed, have been praying for him and continue to pray for his sweet wife, Alice, uh, great longtime friends of ours, more than 30 years. And so uh, it feels where our heart's a little heavy, all right? But uh, we know that he is, we celebrate his release. We, we are grateful and thankful for um, that this is not the end. Whatever looks like the end to us is not the end. And so again, I want to start by being thankful tonight for uh, for my friends and for uh, my family and for all that uh, that God has truly not just blessed but he has enriched my life with many many people and and I'm grateful for each and every one of them I'm grateful to him above everything uh, tonight but I, we want to get in the word and and uh, I uh, want to uh, want to say uh, we're going to uh, I'm going to start in Hebrews tonight. So if you have your Bible, I don't know whether uh, uh, Jared may be in the gym doing stuff. We do a preemptive strike before <laughs> before Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow, so he may not be posting scripture, and that's cool if he isn't. Uh, so you might want to get your Bible out and, uh, and I'll give you a minute to do that. And so that's, uh, a, uh, we're going to be in Hebrews 13 is where we're going to start. And I want to talk about, um, uh, giving thanks. Obviously that's the, you know, Thanksgiving is, uh, you know, how many times through the, through, throughout the scripture, both Old Old and New Testament, that the term give thanks, right, uh, is in there. And so the thing that really hit my spirit this week as I was thinking about this was, uh, <laughs> was that to give thanks means it is a gift, means it is an offering, means it is something you have some control over, right? So, so I want to think about that for a minute. That's been, I've been thinking about that for just a couple of days. And, you know, we, we talk about what it means to have an attitude of gratitude. We've talked about that before. Uh, and I'm sure you've, you've heard it. If you haven't heard from me, you've heard it from somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, that being said, 
the uh, being grateful, being thankful, uh, is um, to require some focus. It absolutely means that you you have to you have to kind of move through the things that clutter your vision. You have to work past them. Uh, or work beyond them, how, however you want to say it. There's a lot of ways to uh, uh, to make to to make the case for that, but it's about you know because we can always find something to complain about. I, I guarantee you, life presents aggravation <laughs> uh, by the multitude, and if we're not careful, we will only focus on everything that's going wrong, everything that's sideways everything that's upside down, everything that doesn't make sense, everything that doesn't seem to be just, that doesn't seem to be helpful, that doesn't, uh, you know, that that frustrates us, angers us, vexes us, however you want to say it, it gets under our skin, uh, you know, or as I like to say, it eats your lunch. <laughs> and uh, so in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we don't want it to eat our lunch, right? Uh, life, life has challenges. Life, life overwhelms sometimes. Things are not always, we're not always anticipating and expecting things that, uh, that we, that we walk through. And so uh, giving thanks means you have to sometimes look beyond what's, what you didn't expect. Uh, it means sometimes you have to find the positive, and you got to dig around to find it. It's like looking for treasure sometimes. It's like looking for uh, uh, maybe a picture, and you got a whole album in there, but you're flipping through these things looking to find one thing, right? And when you find it, then you, ah, that's it. And so what happens is, is then you can look at the rest of it with perspective. Then you can, then you can, uh, you regather your wits, we'll say. You, uh, you recalibrate. That's a term I like to use. Uh, worship does that for me. If I can, if I can just get in the presence of the Lord, uh, He will lift up. As you know, if your heart's heavy, if you if you've got things weighing on your mind, if you have challenges or questions that are unanswered, you need to you need to leave the questions, leave them at the altar, and spend time in His presence. And he will bring perspective. He'll at least bring rest to you so that you can trust him to work the answers out, right? And so what I, what I want to say to you tonight is that to give thanks is an offering that we bring, all right? It is, it is a gift that we offer. And you know that God you know, has given us tremendous gifts, the gift of his son, the gift of eternal life, the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, there's so many gifts that God has enriched us with that, uh, you know, we're, we're the beneficiaries of his, uh, of his uh, generosity and his goodness and his loving kindness and his, uh, uh, you know, enduring mercies. You know, his, what's the scripture says, his mercy endureth forever, right? And so we need only to start to contemplate and think on things like this so that we can so that we can re, so that we can settle into what what has meaning what has what is meaningful and and uh, has value what uh you know we would treasure or uh look at and say yeah this this matters and and it's not that some of those other things don't matter, but this matters more because it does something. It works something in me, right? It, it reveals something. And so when we can, uh, when we can um, get ourselves in the presence of the Lord and we can be thankful when it seems like you've got every reason not to be, when you have every opportunity to say, uh, you know, I, I don't want to. Now, all the more reason to, all the more reason to find, dig through that I don't want to, dig through that, 
all that stuff that frustrates, all that stuff that distracts, all that stuff that pulls us aside. And, and, and dig through that if you have to. Sometimes you got to roll up your sleeves and, 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 uh, and you know, get your hands dirty a little bit, moving through some stuff. But when you find and you realize there's still something to be grateful for and to be thankful for, then you offer that to the Lord, right? Then you present that and you bring that and you say, Lord, Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for my family. I thank you for, uh, you know, my job. And you start to offer something. And so it becomes, it's not just a, a demand. It's something that you get to give. It's something that you take responsibility for. It's something that, that uh, um, reveals the connection in your heart, between your heart and between God's heart. That's what it means when you talk about giving thanks. It's a it's that free will offering. And so in that spirit tonight, I want to make a couple of uh, uh, statements here in a minute. But let's go ahead and look at uh, Hebrews 13 and 15. Uh, the writer says, By him, speaking of Christ, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. And so this is one of our great privileges as believers, as those who uh, have experienced a, a saving experience, a, a new birth in the, in the spirit that, that we can offer a sacrifice of praise to God continually, that we can still praise him even when, uh, you know, when the car won't start and, you know, <laughs> and the power's out or whatever. You can still praise him. You can still, there's still things to be thankful for, right? And so, you know, there's some practical elements to all this, but but the sacrifice of praise, you know, we covered a lot of this when I talked about and, and spent eight eight different Wednesday nights on the Tabernacle of David. And if you want to have a better understanding of the New Covenant, if you, I, I would encourage you to go back through the archive either on our YouTube channel uh, or in, on Facebook. You can go back through our videos that have been posted. They, they, As far as I know, they're there. If not, you can maybe find the link to YouTube. And, and if you will do that, like it and subscribe to it, doesn't cost you anything. It's uh, it's not uh, um, you know it's not anything like that. But it, we, you will get notified whenever we put new content up. And every time we uh, we video a message Sunday morning or this like this Wednesday like tonight every Wednesday night that goes on our YouTube channel as well. So you can go and access those things. You can go back retroactively and go back and go through those things. Uh, if you subscribe, you will have access to that. So. Uh, it's, yeah, you know, one of the things that God has, has, I believe dropped in my spirit to define who I am is that it's that God would have me be a resource for the body of Christ. And so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, um, I'm going to give the time to it. I'm, you know, working on a, on my third book. I, and, and so I've got a footprint out there, whether it's by CDs or in the back in the day, cassette tapes, CDs. Uh, now we're building quite a, a video library, uh, and so uh, you know we, we, I'll encourage you to access those things. I'm not just I'm not just talking to hear my head roar, okay? I'm not just trying to uh, just say some things. Just you know, I'm certainly not here to look pretty. That's for sure. <laughs> but I but, but I've got some things that God has put on my heart to say and to uh, and to declare and to. Uh, and to communicate. And so uh, I encourage you to look at that. This this goes with that Tabernacle of David uh, series, but this was one of the things we talked about in that, and I don't want to get back into that specifically tonight, but it's important to understand that, to understand, to have the, a right comprehension of the New Testament, of the New Covenant. And so so we are called to offer a sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. And so when you think about that, it, it reminds me of 1 Peter uh, 2 and 5, where he calls us li lively stones, right? And says we're built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
uh, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. So what we offer needs to be something that is pleasant and pleasing to God. Now, what else can we offer except our praise and our gratefulness for his blessing, his mercy, his salvation, his son, his, his divine favor, his watch care, his provision, his, uh, his uh, keeping power. There's so many things that we can use. It's, once you start, it, once it sets itself in your heart to be grateful and you understand that you can control your attitude with, with just, simp, just the simple act of, of offering your thanks, of, of remembering when you get out of sorts and you get kind of, uh, uh, you know, off balance a little bit or, uh, you know, off, you know, off key a little bit, you need to, what can I do? And so some, we act like sometimes it's a great mystery, but just start being thankful. Start, start getting specific and, you know, I mean, you know, count your blessings, all of those things, all of those things. And it's, it will, it will invoke uh, uh, praise and worship, and that will change the atmosphere of your outlook on life. And when you think about that, it means it shifts your attitude, it shifts your mindset, it uh, puts you in a in a more congenial place. You, you know, you, your wife might even like you more, and uh, and your husband might appreciate you more. Just your own spirit that you carry, right? All of that stuff it it helps. It sure ain't gonna hurt anything, right? Anyway, I want to go to, uh, I think I want to go to Exodus 25 and 1. So we want to, I want to start here. Now, this doesn't have the word thanks in it, but what I want to talk about tonight is the, this principle. All right, and see, so in Exodus 25 verses 1 and 2, it says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Tell the children of Israel. He told Moses, he said, you tell them to bring me an offering. Of every man that gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. Now, so God says to Moses, tell the people to bring me an offering and tell them to bring it willingly. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want their heels dug in. I don't want you to have to take it away from them. I don't want you to have to demand it. I don't want you to have to like pull them teeth to get them to do anything, right? Uh, I, I want you to tell them to bring me an offering and do it willingly because God loves a cheerful giver, right? In, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, I believe it is, where, where Paul says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. It's actually the word cheerful there is the Greek word that can be translated hilarious. So, uh, you know, God, God loves a people who's Oppor who sees their opportunity to give and it so elates them it so they so enjoy it that they get giddy about it right they they uh it, it affects them positively and they they uh, enjoy giving they enjoy the offering they enjoy what they're doing because it's just another method of worship right now the context of this in Exodus 25 i think is is very uh, important to understand, and it is that that God's speaking specifically about the materials, the resources, the financial need, uh, or you know the uh, um, the funding, the supply, the materials, the resources to build the tabernacle of Moses. That's how he starts this now. Uh, you say, okay, but that's old Bible, and that's the tabernacle of Moses. Well, you know, we're we're not going to rebuild the tabernacle of Moses. Thank God for that. We don't have to do that. We're not going to do it, and that's not what I'm preaching. What I want you to see is the principle behind it. And you and I are a tabernacle or the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? God is fitly framing a people together, okay, According to Ephesians chapter 2, you and I are being fitly framed together, built together as an holy habitation of God, and we're built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So God's still building a tabernacle. God's still building a temple. He's just using you and I as living stones or lively stones. I referenced that in 
1 Peter 2 there a few minutes ago. And so, so we are the materials. And so what God is saying here is, is, that, is that we need to bring an, an offering. We need to offer ourselves as these materials. And so we already talked about the, the, what we started out with in Hebrews 13 was the sacrifice of praise. Uh, that is, you know, uh, giving thanks unto God, the fruit of our lips. That is giving thanks to God, right? And so we're called, if God's building something with you and I, then, and, and we understand, and we, we understand the idea that God's building something here, that there's something happening among us. Amen. You know, I, I see too many places, too many, too many people that, that they come together uh, to, uh, to have church rather than realizing that the coming together is God building the church, is God putting us together, is God uh, building something that, uh, uh, that is attractive to people from the, to the outside that would say, I've got a shelter built for you. I've got a place. Hey, I've got something that will, that will bring meaning and comfort into your life. I've got something that will, that will wash away your sins. I've, I've got the, the message of salvation is being lived in a people. And so, well, that, that shows up with a joyous people, with a people who the fruit of their lips is giving thanks. And you walk into that kind of atmosphere where people are we're honoring God, are loving Jesus, are giving him everything from the depths of their spirit and they are pouring it out and speaking it into the air. They're creating an atmosphere for people to come and discover a relationship with Christ for themselves. And this is a powerful thing. Give thanks unto the Lord. It's your offering. Offer it. Hey, think about the things that you are grateful for, the people that you love, the people you care about, and give thanks for that and, and honor the Lord with that which you are, uh, uh, you know, responsible for, right? And so, uh, you know, not only is this a principle of of an opportunity for us to grow and come together uh, fitly framed. And when something's fitly framed, it means it fits well, right? It means it comes together like it's supposed to. And that's one of those things that's hard for people. We don't know how to come together. Sometimes we don't know. Look, this is a cultural issue that we've got. We don't know how to come together right now because everybody's so concerned about being right and being on and, and, and having a perspective that, that nobody can have any, uh, any mercy on somebody of a different idea than them. And so, you know, you got to find, and how do we do that? Well, we're not thankful enough. Let me tell you that because it'll soften your heart and it'll help you open yourself up and have some patience and some tolerance. It will help you to figure out that, that there may be folks out there who don't see things the same way you do, but it doesn't mean Jesus loves them any less, and it doesn't mean you should or you get to. I'm listening to people who are telling people right now, you don't have to be kind to those people that don't believe like you believe, that, that embrace a, a different political a side of the aisle than you. You don't have to be nice to them. And I want to tell you something, folks. That is absolutely some of the most dangerous propaganda and and uh, and information that you can do is feed people with a superior attitude. You need to figure out who you're not and figure out, if you can't figure out who you are, figure out who you're not and get with something that will change your life and bring some humility and some ideas because you haven't always been right and you may not be right today about some things. So how about you cut your nice little slice of humble pie there and, and maybe figure something out and maybe that way you can help other people figure something out, right? Give thanks. Be thankful for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, in, in 1 Chronicles 16, which again is another the, where David sets the Ark of the Covenant in the Tabernacle of David. That's in 1 Chronicles 15 and 16. All that story about him restoring that and bringing it back into Israel. Uh, you know, one of the things uh, that it talks about is the, the 
the importance of giving thanks, the importance of worship, the importance of all that. All this connects with what God wants to build. If God's going to build, if we're here to build something redemptive in the earth, and I believe we are, then we need to learn how to do it. Some of the some of the tools that we use is is being thankful and being gracious and and being uh, and uh, understanding. Uh, what it means to worship and be in his presence, and that that should help us be merciful and gracious unto other people, and perhaps they can taste and see the goodness of the Lord in your life and my life so that they can find him and and feed on him themselves. So this is a, this is a, a very, very important thing. And that's why, that's why you have to that's why it is so important that we take the time to be thankful. And maybe you're not going to have the thanksgiving you thought you were going to get to have. And I'm not saying this because of government mandate, all right? Now, I'm not talking about that. Look, that's, uh, you know, I mean, I have issues with some of that stuff. So I'm just, I'll shoot straight with you. Uh, you know, there's some things that they control, but what happens in my house and who I allow and who I can have in my house they don't they don't have any control over that okay that's my house and as long as i've paid my taxes and i've done all my stuff that they require me to do they can stay out of my house that's how i feel about that okay i'm not saying my attitude is pristine and great and all that i'm not, <laughs> i'm, I'm a, a self aware enough to know that i may have just a little bit of, just a touch of attitude in there but i'm telling you this is you know i i'm, I'm not really talking about that particularly. I'm talking about, there, there are just people that we can't get to. There are people that because of the circumstances, because of the, uh, of the, uh, of, of the risk, then there are people that we may not get to see. But I, so what I want you to do is you need to, you need to get creative and find a way to reach into people's lives. You need to find a way, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a card, whether it's a, uh, a Facebook messenger call or just a message or uh, post something on their wall about them. You need to find the way to do that. We have so many tools. Tell them that you appreciate them and how thankful you are for them and how much you love them. Listen, folks, we, you know, we haven't learned anything. I buried three great friends this year. And haven't gotten to go to actually to the to the place uh, to, to any of the memorial services. I've had to do them virtually, and I'm telling you, it hurts. But it's better than not going at all. And so, if you have to do some of this stuff virtually, then find a way to make it work and make it make it as productive as you can, so that your heart can be discerned and understood by those folks whom you love and care about and give thanks for, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 10, the, the book of restoration. There's, there's so many places in the 10th chapter of Nehemiah. Go read this stuff well, it's, uh, and understand that when you when you see what's happening is, is they're trying to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple and, and recover what they lost in the Babylonian captivity. And so, but, but to do this, it's a, it was a monumental task. It, it was, you know, they had to rebuild the wall. It was, the whole city was burned with fire. They had to, uh, had to go back to the foundation to rebuild the house and rebuild the, the, the sanctuary. They had to uh, uh, rededicate the priesthood. And, and you know, I mean, because you don't have a temple, you don't have a functional priesthood, right? So you had, so they had to, they had to draw the priesthood out. They had to call them out. They had to, they had to speak to them. The Holy Spirit had to, had to speak into the air and into the body and say, if you're a descendant of Levi, we need you to come out. If you remember who you are, then come out and you gotta, you, you, you gotta step into a different dimension of life. Can I tell you, there are people that are, that are, that have just kind of said that, uh, who think that ship has sailed for them. They think they're too old. They think they're too broken. They think they're too, uh, they're, uh, they're, 
Uh, they've squandered too many opportunities. Can I tell you that the Holy Ghost is saying now's the accepted time? Now is the day of salvation. Harden not your hearts if you'll hear it. If you can hear the Holy Spirit tonight, he's saying now, today, call it today. Step into a dimension, a relationship of life and grace, of peace and joy and righteousness in the kingdom of God, in the Holy Spirit. Step into that today so that you can, so that you can, uh, live meaningfully in in the years that you have. I've been blessed. I've been able to have a bit. I got started relatively early, uh, and and have stayed the course for uh, you know for uh, you know for my entire adult life. And so I'm I, I'm uh, that doesn't make me anything special, but it it humbles me, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful God got a hold of me early. Because he saved me a lot of restarts. He saved me a lot of heartache. He saved me for all that we might have along the way. I thank God for what he saved me from. I thank God for the, the, the trauma and the turmoil and the, and the difficult days that, that I've been spared because I made the Lord my choice when I was younger. And I stuck with that choice even when I was in seasons that I didn't that I, that I didn't fully understand what was going on. I was able to hang in there and stay, uh, stay with it. And so I encourage you to, um, you know, was Jesus, I think it's in Luke 18, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Literally, it means, I don't mean to swoon or to fall over the floor. It means not to forfeit, not to give up, not to say, nah, I'm not playing anymore, right? Amen. So, you know, sometimes you just have to stand and you have to, when you've done all that you know to do to stand, you you continue to stand there for with your, uh, you know, with the armor of God on, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, a helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, having your loins girt about, uh, you know, with uh, with a girdle of truth, having the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and, and a shield of faith in your hand and you can you can stand uh, whatever evil is in the day you and I can withstand it and we can stand and remain standing it, we don't have to fall anymore but thank god if we do fall if we do stumble if we if we do lapse thank god that he is uh, he is faithful and just if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So be thankful for Jesus. Be thankful for a Savior who, uh, who is grand and glorious. Be thankful for uh, a, a, a heavenly Father who is able to communicate fatherhood into our lives. Maybe our natural fathers haven't been able to communicate that as efficiently, but thank God there's a heavenly father that can show us fatherhood. And when we start to see that, if we can emulate that, if we can, excuse me, if we can imitate that and we can follow after that which we see and understand to be, uh, to be accurate and true in his life, and in his, in our relationship with him, then we have a fighting chance of affecting the generations after us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the, the free will offering that we're talking about here, every time when God says, I want to build something, we need to bring an offering. Well, that offering that we bring is being thankful. That offering, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. We talked, that's where we started. And so that's where we are. That's as, okay, God's building something, so let's be thankful. Be thankful you're a part of it. Be thankful you're not... Uh, you know, you 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 get to bear witness. Be thankful that you know you may not be you may not be in the thick of it, but it, can you see it? If you can't climb a tree like Zacchaeus, climb a tree, get up where you where Jesus is coming in your in your town and your area that you find a vantage point that allows you to see him. Hallelujah! And I guarantee you, when he makes eye contact with you, he says, "Hey, I'm gonna come to your house. Uh, you, you, 
I want, I want to, I want to live with you. I want to dwell where you are. Glory to God. And so then you get to be thankful all over again, right? Because you made him a priority, right? You made him, uh, you made the Lord's work and his, and his ministry and his, uh, his, uh, life. You made it your priority. And so be thankful for that because it unlocks, it unlocks the kingdom. But more than, you know, we're, sometimes I think we, we're looking to try to unlock stuff out there when what we really need to do is unlock the depths of our own hearts so he can flow through, right? And so then let the treasure, let the glory of God flow across the threshold of your temple and flow out to where it brings life wherever it goes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's go to Psalm 92 and verse 1. Well, there's so many, so many Psalms. Excuse me. There's so many Psalms that have, that talks about being thankful and giving thanks. We're, we're going to go through a list of those here in a minute. Now, we're not going to turn and read them. I'm going to call them out. You can, uh, you, if you're taking notes or whatever, you can, uh, you can write them down or, or some of you probably know them, but I want to talk about some of this. But Psalm 92 and 1, and understand this is a psalm or a song for the Sabbath day. So what I want to say to you is, is that Jesus came to establish the Sabbath day. You say, well, wait a minute. The Sabbath day was established when Moses gave the Ten Commandments. It was established in creation, right? God rested on the seventh day. God rested not because he was tired or exhausted from all that creating he did. He rested because everything he did was good, and he took a moment to savor and just drink in all the goodness that he could see that he had wrought. And so the Sabbath day is a moment, it's a day, it's a season, it's an hour, it's a time for you and I where we just stop, not because we're exhausted from all that we've been doing, that might be part of it, but because we want to celebrate the good things that he's created in our life, we want to appreciate and honor and take in and, and just with wonder in our gaze, we want to just try to see everything good that God has done in our life. See, the Sabbath day is not a particular day of the week. This is where we get tangled up in this. We get tangled up in this because we, we debate whether it starts at 6 o'clock on Friday night and ends at 6 o'clock on Saturday or whether it's the first day of the week on Sunday. And so we get in these little schisms and, and squabbles about stuff like that I'm telling you that Christ is our Sabbath day. What Jesus did was he came and he merited our salvation and you and I by grace now receive by faith what he worked so hard, the price he paid. And so this is, our salvation is a Sabbath rest to us. And so this becomes, and you look at this, I think it's in Philippians, I think it's in Philippians or Colossians chapter two. I have to look at that and see, but where it talks about let no man, uh, you know, um, spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit or in the, or in the observance of new moons and, and, and Sabbath days and holy days and all that stuff. So, so what he's saying to the Gentile churches is don't get caught up in this stuff because, you know, the, these things were a shadow, but Christ is the substance. We need to find these things in him. And when we find these things in him, then he sets the absolute meaning for all that they are. And he brings you and I to this, this place where we can just rest in all that he's done. Now, because we rest, it doesn't mean that we never do anything. It means that we learn how to not wear ourselves out trying to work for God. We learn how to spend ourselves working with him, seeing what he does. See, that's the work of the son. Jesus said, those things that I see my father do, that's what I do. Amen. And so we need to be we need to be people of insight and vision so that we can see what the Father would do and we can work with him. It saves us from wearing ourselves out trying to get something done and just or just the the mindset of trying to look busy so God doesn't think we're lax, right? 
Amen. A song for the song for the Sabbath day. He is my song in the night. He is my joy. He is my salvation. He is my keeper. He is my reward. He is everything to me. So he is my song. And when I sing about the goodness of the Lord, when I sing of his mercy, when I sing of his grace, when I sing of his, of his sacrifice, when I sing of these things, it brings a rest to me. So it all becomes a song of my Sabbath day that I didn't earn it. I didn't get it on my own. I didn't win it by my hand or by my strength or by my wisdom, but I received it by grace through faith and that not of myself. It was the gift of God, Ephesians chapter two in my life. And so now I've received a gift, my gift, my offering, my what I willingly and willfully offer to him is my appreciation and my thanks for all that he's done in my life. And so this is an incredibly important element to to how we uh, how we are able to uh, you know maintain our composure uh, in in a world that seems to be unraveling around us. Hallelujah! You know the old saying about uh, a, a a Bible that's falling apart is usually owned by a Christian who's not. That's kind of you know you kind of take that principle and you transfer it over if we've got something working in us that's 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 powerful that puts us together that builds something redemptive in your life and my life then when the world around us appears to be unraveling or appears to be unstable you and I can remain stable you and I can continue to stand because we dug down and built on the rock amen we dug down and built on something that's secure that we can fasten to we have an anchor for the soul hey we have that anchor, and so now we are fastened, safe and secure from all alarms. Amen? A song for the Sabbath day, Psalm 92, verse 1. David says, it is a good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises under thy name, O Most High. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Paul said this to the Philippians. He says, and finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are uh, of good report, whatsoever things, uh, you know, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And so there's all these marvelous things to contemplate and to, and to feed your mind on and, and, and to allow your way of thinking to become seated in a heavenly place. And when we start to think uh, and abide mentally in a, more, in a heavenly position, then it helps us to navigate some of this stuff around here and it helps it to have less effect on you and I we can kind of brush it aside a little more easily. But it is a good thing to give thanks. So give thanks. Tomorrow is, a, is, a, is just one day that we have set aside to specifically honor the Lord and to be thankful, to count your blessings, even for people who are not believers. They will count their blessings. They will have something that they can appreciate and you know, I know for some people it's just about the meal or the football games on Sunday on Thursday afternoon or not having to go to work and, and those are all great things in and of themselves, uh, you know. But uh to not forget to honor the Lord in this day, to be thankful for the people and the things that God has put in our lives, that God has built into our lives, the purpose that he has birthed in us, the value. There's a sacredness to that that I want to underscore tonight, and it needs to be something that that we do not take for granted, that we, that we 
do not overlook. That is how wonderful this life can be when it has meaning and when at the root of that and the foundation of that, God is the centerpiece and the focal point of it. Because he sets our life in such array and he brings such balance to us and he helps us find such a, a, uh, a place of such value. Can I tell you that the world's full of people that, that, that don't have peace? And it's, it's from people, they may go somewhere and get a, get a turkey dinner tomorrow. And thank God for people who will feed folks that, that don't have the ability to feed themselves. Or I thank God for those people. I, th I thank God for people who take their day and they, they give it to somebody else. Because they can be thankful 364 other days of the year, right? And they thank, they're thankful for an opportunity to help somebody who can't, maybe can't and not able to help themselves in the moment. So, so that's a marvelous thing. But there's people who, would, uh, who have no idea the dimension of peace and joy that can be theirs by a simple relationship with Jesus Christ. But by and through the saving grace of our Savior, we can, have a, we can live a life that's worth living and and have positive influence in, uh, on other people and help them find a, a, an abundant life, a great life, uh, so much better than what they maybe have ever known before. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. Um, so it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. That's my offering tonight. I encourage you to bring your offering to the Lord. Bring it willingly. Bring it into his presence. And whether it's, you know, we, sometimes we just think of turning thanks or giving thanks as just a simple prayer around a meal, and that's a marvelous thing. Don't take that for granted. That's, a, that's you know, I mean, it's, that's wonderful. But giving thanks is more than just praying over your food. There's more to it than that. Being able to, uh, to, uh, to appreciate all that God has done, all that he has saved us from, not just in the future, but in the past. I believe the future too, <laughs> but particularly the past. And so I want to say, don't forget to bring your offering. Don't forget, you know, you, and, and if you're a believer, this is not just limited to tomorrow, right? This will this will this will have you in a right frame of mind and in a right spirit uh, all year long. As often as you do this, you will find a a better life to be grateful, to be thankful, to speak acknowledgement unto the Lord for His goodness and His loving kindness, for His grace and His mercy, for His power and His Embrace. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Because I guarantee you, he's the song in your Sabbath day. And once you start thanking him, there'll be a song, a poem, a verse. Something starts to rise up. Why? Because that river starts to flow. That glory starts to churn in there. And you start to find a, just a release of the Holy Spirit in your life, and that you can you can absolutely uh, you can absolutely um, glorify the Lord in all that you're in, in all that you're doing and all that you know. I mean, it just makes such a positive impact, and it so helps manage and navigate all that is. Uh, all that's going on in your life. It helps you stay in the right spirit. Whereas, you know, the psalmist also said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, right? And so if you want to renew a right spirit, bring your offering, bring, give thanks unto the Lord. 
So bring that offering of being thankful, of being grateful, of appreciation and blessing. And bring that and start giving that. Start offering that to the Lord in your devotion, in your in just your uh, in your drive, in in your uh, in the quietness of your recliner, in the in just start thanking Him for the blessings in your life and for how He's helped you through and 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 took care of you. We used to have this old saying that uh, used to travel around that the Lord takes care of fools and idiots and. And, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of living proof that that's, there's a little bit of truth in that because <laughs> I've, uh, I've been pretty idiotic at times and I've certainly played the fool, certainly when I was much younger and, and before Christ. And so, uh, but I just want to say that, you know, there's a, there's a marvelous, marvelous opportunity, uh, to, uh, to live well today. Not just struggle and eat by and scratch your way through till you get to heaven. Thank God for going to heaven. Thank God for that. I'm not taking that away from anybody. But I'm telling you, if you can, if you can learn to unlock yourself in, and, and open your heart and give from your heart this gift of thanksgiving and this gift of being thankful and grateful to God for all his blessings in your life, then I'm telling you it will it will pay dividends. It will bless. It will enhance your spirit. You will find yourself maybe smiling at folk that typically you wouldn't smile at. And maybe they need it. Maybe they need a good smile from somebody, right? And maybe you're just the candidate to, to offer that. Amen? And I talked about there being some other psalms in here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a phrase, and it's, uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, right? Oh, give thanks. It's just the simple O, oh, not O-H. And if you read the Old Testament, if you read in there a lot, you will see uh, here, O oh, Israel, the Lord our God is one, I think in, in Deuteronomy. And so often it says here, O oh, ye kings, you know, and, and that, that word, that uh, that. O is in there a lot. And what, what in some of the course of my study, I, I found out that, uh, excuse me, uh, that in rabbinical Judaism, there is uh, that, that O, that single O carries redemptive, the, the acknowledgement of redemptive properties and character characteristics uh, and con redemptive connotations. So anytime you see that, when you look at this, if you look at it from that perspective, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. The redemptive property of being thankful that God that that it unlocks, it just absolutely lets the reality and the recognition of His great redemption flowing into you, flowing through you, establishing itself in your life and my life. And we allow that to flow. Let it become the river that Jesus prophesied in John 7. You know, at the, at, he stood up at the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles and he said, he cried out, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, out of his soul, out of his spirit, shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. You got more than one river in you. Hallelujah. And it's a spiritual thing. It's alive. It's moving. It's living water. And that, if you start offering your thanks, it kind of unstops the flow. It unclutters the flow. Whatever might hinder the flow of that river, that just kind of moves it aside and lets the river, lets the current run swifter. And if the current runs swifter, it starts to it starts to channel even deeper into the earth. And so the, the beauty of, of what God is saying is he wants to run deep and wide and, and wide open too, for that matter, but he wants to run deep and wide in your life and my life. He wants, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Let me, let me just say this about that phrase. That phrase you will find in Psalm 105 and verse 1, 106 and verse 1, 107 and verse 1, 118 and verse 1, and also verse 29 of that same psalm. And then Psalm 136, it is in each of the first three verses and also in verse 26. So, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. The redemptive idea should stir the, the, the return of thankfulness out of our hearts unto the Lord, right? It should, it should be one of the easiest gifts because he has been so active. He has been so uh, benevolent. He has blessed so richly. He has, uh, his mercies have been uh, so, so prized and treasured that, that it should, being thankful ought to be not second nature. It ought to be first nature to you and I. Hallelujah. And so I want to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tonight, and I want to, I want to close with this. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, uh, I understand that Paul is writing this whole chapter. I need to give you some context for this as well. Uh, but verses 16 through 23 Paul is speaking of a people that have a, uh, you know, day of the Lord mindset or attitude. He says, you as children of the light and children of the day in, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. Uh, and so, so we are children of the light. We are children of the day. And because of this, what day is that? The day of the Lord. We're, children, we're, we're the offspring of that day. We are the, the sons and daughters of a day that was longed for and and prized by the patriarchs of old, that was prophesied by every prophet that's got a, his, his name on a book in here, and, and even some of them that didn't make the book, right? Uh, you know, what I'm after here is, is that we are we are a people of destiny. We are a people of purpose. We are a people that is designed to give expression to the kingdom of God in the earth. We are a people designed to see and for the for the glory of the Lord to be seen and reflected in your life and in my life. And that's who we are. And so so he he goes through this list of of uh, uh, things and he says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. I want to focus on verse 18, uh, and I'm going to come back to it. Uh, he says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means completely or entirely. Uh, and I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming or the nearness of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, all right? All of that's attributes to children of the day, children of light. This is, we need to live here. This is where we're called to live. This is his kingdom, and this is where we live. So rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. I want to focus on this one tonight because Thanksgiving is this is this uh, moment where the whole world just stops and becomes mindful of how blessed we are. And so I, I, I certainly encourage that. I certainly applaud that. Uh, but he says, in everything, give thanks. He doesn't say for everything, right? But he says, in everything. So you and I need to have an attitude of gratitude and a grateful heart and spirit in everything, even if it's what we didn't choose, even if it's what we would rather have, you know, if we would have had our druthers, we'd have rather, <laughs> uh, you know, something turned out differently than it did. Okay, 
you didn't get your druthers this time, so, but be thankful. You still have something to be thankful for, right? You still can have an attitude and a right spirit. You can still, you can still live the kingdom life. You can still do that. You can still be light and salt in the earth. You can still, you and I are still a city set on a hill. You and I are still salt to hopefully preserve things, to season lives, to uh, to make people thirsty. And also, one of the things that gets overlooked about salt is that it would you take in the right amount, it allows your physical structure to appropriate electrolytes and liquids for the overall health of your muscles and the structure of your being. So that's an important element of salt that doesn't rarely gets mentioned. Uh, that's, you know, that's, that's, amen, that's important, all right? And so salt, let's help somebody, salt their life so that when they drink from your fountain, when they drink from the fountain of the Lord, that it, it doesn't just pass through them and pass out, that it, it, it finds its way into the structure of their being and helps them not cramp, helps them not, not spasm, helps them find their feet and find the strength that they need to live in a manner that is pleasing unto the Lord. And so I want to, I want to say it's how important all that is that you and I find our way to this, to get this right in everything. Do what? Give thanks. Bring your offering. Bring it to the Lord. He's building something redemptive in the, in the earth. It's called his house. It's called his church. It's called his dwelling place. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, uh, bricks and mortar. I'm not talking about a, a hewn stone or, or, or uh, uh, cedar and, and beams and, and timbers of, uh, or shingles and concrete. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about what we have when we gather together, when we come as one in him. Let us give thanks for this redemptive thing that God is building and in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. It's God's heart for you and I to be thankful and he wants us to do it willingly. He told Moses, he said, you tell them to bring their offering and bring it willingly. I want them. And he says to you and I, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So how about we, how about we, how about we smile real big? My dad used to say this thing. He's not just smiling. He's grinning out loud. And, uh, and so what, what I want you to, what I want you to think about is, is when you give thanks, beam with it, let it shine, let the glory of it uh, absolutely affect your countenance. Uh, find a way to uh, enjoy offering your thanks unto the Lord and giving him because it blesses him. And oh, saints, he's blessed us so. Hallelujah. He has been, he's such a blessing in our lives. Let's give thanks. Oh, give thanks. The Redeemer lives and we are grateful for redemption. We're grateful for salvation. We're grateful for a Savior who is loving and kind and gracious and merciful and compassionate and, and long-suffering toward us and, and, and simply receives that which we offer, but uh, where he doesn't have to, it's not like pulling teeth, but it's where we, we've, we've matured and we've learned as sons that this is, this is our responsibility to offer unto him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We can look at things and we can find them detestable. We can find them discouraging. We can find them unappealing and distasteful. I mean, we can, and you can, there's a lot more adjectives and descriptive terms that you can throw in there, but I think I've made my point. Or in the midst of that, we can start to think about and feed on his blessing in our life, what he means to us, and how he has 
increased or appreciated the value of our life. Can I tell you my, without Jesus, I was getting, I was going no place fast, right? All I was doing was just tromping around and, 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 not getting anywhere, not accomplishing anything, not having any real focus, purpose. I was trying to trying to find my way in the world and I didn't know what way to go and how to go about it and all that stuff because it's you know, you're young and you're clueless. And then I found the way. And its name is Jesus. And then I found, discovered the truth. And it's not a list of things to believe in. It's a person. It's Jesus. And when I found him as the way and I found him as the truth, I found life. I found him as my life. I found him as the life I wanted to live. I found him as something worth living. I found him as a way of life that was that was greater than anything I had ever thought possible for this old boy. Because I was pretty clueless and I was I, I you know, I mean I was I was going to try, I was going to do everything I knew how to do to try to live well and have a good life, but I found Jesus and he showed me a good life and I live well. I've, I I I've I'm blessed and I appreciate it and I'm grateful for that. So let me close with this. I said this earlier, but I'm gonna it bears repeating, and so I want to repeat it. We're you know there we can't be with everybody that we want to be with. Whether it's by our choice or their choice or by you know other circumstances whether there's sickness, whether there's uh, financial uh, reasons for all that, because with all the shutdowns and all the things, there's people can't afford to travel like, uh, like perhaps they, uh, they may have been able to afford to do. So I want to tell you something. This is important. This is important. People need to be encouraged. And so as children of light, I'm saying to you saints, encourage somebody. People that you've thought about, people that you think about, that maybe, you know, you think about them and you and, and you kind of think, well, I'll do it later. Do it now. Life's precious. And it doesn't last forever. So send a positive message. Send it to your family if you can't be with them, if you can't see them, regardless. Make sure they know how you feel. Make sure they know what a blessing they are, that you're thankful for them, what they mean to you, for your friends, your family, and your friends. You've got so many tools to do that, whether it's a telephone, a landline, a cell phone, Instagram, Facebook, and I will say this, even Twitter. Use it for something nice. Be, you know, kind of break the mold, please. Use it for something positive. Use it for something nice. You say, well, somebody will troll me. Well, you know, don't worry about it. Just communicate. Write on their wall on Facebook if it's something that you want to shout from the housetop. If it's something very intimate or personal, then private message it. But speak it. Say it, state it. Make sure it gets heard. Because you don't know where people are. You don't know how discouraged people are. You don't know how overwhelmed people are sometimes. And so everything that you can do, even in the simplest of even in the simplest of deeds or actions. I encourage you to do it. Be salt. Be light. Give thanks. Tell somebody you love how thankful you are that they're part of your life, that God has blessed you through them.
that they have made your life better, that they've made your life sweeter, that they've made your life richer, that something about them, it doesn't, we need to say these things to people. We need to do that. And so I, I challenge you to do it. Please do it. Please do it. You have the ability to do it. We have so many tools to do such a simple thing. So many of us are looking for some grand monumental, uh, you know, deed or action to do. And so, you know, I mean, something that we would look at and think, wow, that's too great. I couldn't do that. God, God hadn't told any of us we have to climb Mount Everest to get saved, right? Thank God for that, right? Because there's a lot of us just wouldn't make it. Amen? All he said is believe. We had a book that we read when the boys were smaller. It was about, it was a book, it was one of the old arch books for those of you who are old enough to remember them or if you've got copies of them uh, and you would maybe, uh, you got grandkids, they're, they're very uh, good Bible story type books, all right? Uh, so what I what I want you to um, what I, what I was going to say is is that you know you can use those things but but that we had a book about uh, about Naaman and uh, and the title of the book I, I remember the title of the book it's the man that took seven baths and Naaman was a Syrian uh, general and he had leprosy and so he couldn't. Uh, he couldn't be around anybody. And so one of his attendants told him, he said, you know, there's a prophet in Israel and he can probably pray for you and you can get healed. And so Naaman goes to him. I think it's Elisha. Naaman goes to him and he says, you know, what can you do for me? And Elisha just looks at him and says, go wash seven times in the Jordan River. And you know, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, for a, for a man of dignity, a man of status, that's probably a pretty uh, low bar, <laughs> I'll say. Well, how come I can't go kill a thousand people, right? How come I can't, you know, he's a man of war. He's ready to go do, he's ready to, he's a champion. He wants to do, he's ready to do whatever brave feat, some great feat of bravery or courage or uh astounding accomplishment or achievement. He's ready to do that. And the prophet says, go wash seven times in the river. And so the name of the book, Samantha took seven baths. And in the, in that book, it says, uh, his, uh, servant says to him, he gets indignant in the book. And he's, but his servant says to him, if he had asked you to go do something great, you'd have done it. Why don't you just go do what he said? And so in the simplicity of it all, nothing great, nothing grand, nothing glorious, nothing that's going to be plastered in tomorrow's headlines, right? He goes and bathes seven times and the Lord heals his leprosy. Why do I share that? Simply because the opportunities we have are not always going to be plastered on headlines. They're not always going to make us famous or make us, uh, give us the status of celebrity. And uh, if you knew everything that come with that, you probably wouldn't want it anyway. I know that I, I certainly am, have no, suffer from no aspirations of that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's just me. Uh, but Simple acts of kindness can possibly prevent headlines. Make people feel like they have value. Make people feel like they're uh, like they're worth something. So that maybe they won't overdose. So that maybe they won't do something that regretful that is unalterable. So consider that. You may not make a headline, but you might keep a headline from being made. And I say to you, that's worth doing. 
Give thanks. Give it willingly. It's your gift to the Father. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful and thankful. Lord, we bless you and ask you right now, Lord, to bless this word. Father, I pray for you to encourage your people, everyone who has listened and, and commented and liked, shared, whatever, Lord God, I just pray, Father, that you would, that, that you would just allow them to bring their gift and their offering to you tonight. And Father, that they would be faithful and diligent, Lord God, to and be mindful of the people, Father, that that have blessed their life, and and that Lord, they would be diligent to communicate that blessing and to uh, to uh, make that offering tonight as well to bless other people and to tell them what they mean and to give value and 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 uh, uh, substance of the kingdom. Father, let it be transferred. Let it flow out of us unto someone else tonight. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. And I pray your blessing. I pray for safety over each and every household tonight. I pray for each and every family that gathers in whatever numbers and in whatever capacity, uh, even if it's virtually or, or literally. Father, I pray, God, for your hand of protection. And I pray, Father, for... Uh, for the treasure of your presence, Lord, to be palpable and real and recognized in every gathering and among every heart and in every heart. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are and all that you built in our lives. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. From our house to your house, from our heart to your heart. I pray and speak the blessing of the Lord for your table, for your family, for your friends, for your fellowships. And I just say, we love you guys and we appreciate you. So no matter where you are, know that I'm thankful for you. And I appreciate you. Had the pleasure this evening. It was raining this evening. I'm going to say this and I'm going to, I'm going to end the video. Stepped outside and what saw a huge rainbow tonight. And uh, right across, arched across the Ohio River. One end of it in West Virginia and the other end of it in, the, in Ohio. And I looked at that and I thought, God... Encourage your people. Let us never forget that you are the God of covenant. Let us never forget that you are a God of mercy. Let us never undervalue all that you have done and all that you continue to do and all that you have made alive in us. We love you. We bless you. And we speak peace and grace in your heart, in your house. Goodbye.